Welcome back to Real Estate Investing with Alex Deacon. Alex, how are you today, good sir? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, Adam? I am good. I'm good, good morning today. to you. Good morning to you. Okay. Happy Groundhog Day. We're breaking a oh, fourth yeah. law. Happy Groundhog Day. So, that groundhog is freezing his britches off today. I just, you know what? Before we get into this, though, Alex, I have a problem. I, I've woken up for like the past week, and it's been February second. I think there's something going on. I think that was a movie. Maybe I'm just, yeah. Maybe my wife's just watching a movie too much. All right. So, um, I guess you guys, if you found this, you know where we're at. But if not, make sure you're liking us on Facebook. Uh, check us out on Twitter. Go to dhrea.com and look for uh, Real Estate Investing with Alex Deacon on all of your favorite podcasting sites. Alex, what are we going to be speaking out today, good sir? Well, since it's the weekend of the share sale, so for me, I've spent, I'll spend all weekend probably driving by and looking at about 60 homes okay because the sheriff's sale was on monday morning um i don't know what it's called in other parts of the country or or even other counties but in allegheny county it's the allegheny county sheriff's sale and they have they'll they'll auction off uh, folks who are behind on the mortgage and the mortgage company is initiated the 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 proper protocol which is paperwork and notices and this and that it, it takes months, sometimes years, to finally get somebody out of their house. But it finally culminates into this, into this point where we come to the sale. Okay. And folks who are not paying their taxes, those can go to share of sale. Uh, I'm th- I think there might be some other th- things that can um, cause this sale to be initiated. But it's essentially you're not paying the mortgage or you're not paying your taxes. So Monday at 9 o'clock, from 9 to about 1 they're going to sell, or on the docket, is about 500 homes. So it's about 250 new ones and 250 that were postponed. Because some get postponed for years. Like, just people are, um, they'll initiate an emergency appeal or something like that, and it just gets postponed to the next month or six month. Or someone will do a BK bankruptcy, and it'll get postponed indefinitely until the bankruptcy is is figured out it's okay gotcha. yeah so this weekend for me i thought would be a good time to talk about it since it's friday because tomorrow and sunday i'll be actually out there on the ground looking at houses this whole week's been like some research that i do and i have some partners that do a lot of research huh. so we're going to talk about the pros and cons of sheriff sales uh the pros are 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 good the cons are really bad so there's it's not for everybody and this will help you delineate whether you're ready for this or not well let's start with the pros um i only because i think everybody wants to know the good side of things and then we can always back we can back end it with uh here's why what you need to be careful of um but what are the pros in the sheriff's sale the pros are if if you really have your act together and you know what you're doing your systems are down you have a team in place money all that and a real estate, a really high real estate IQ. Uh, the knowledge pro, of the market's very important too, right? Knowing your market, yeah. Um, you can make a very good you know, success just out of the sales alone. Because okay. there's more than one county. There's Allegheny, there's Beaver, Butler, Washington. Uh, just, But just to give you an example, like Allegheny County might have 500 a month. And a Beaver or Washington County might have 50. So it's a... It's a huge difference because population yeah, is. Population yeah. density, right, right. But that's the pro, the pros are it can be highly lucrative. Right. That's about the only pro. So that's that's the major pro is that you can make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So anytime something se- seems so simple that it's too easy or too good, there's usually some cons to it. Oh, so, my gosh. So yeah. what are these cons? Well, I've, I would have never even got to this point if I didn't have a couple partners that I teamed up with because I would – I just didn't have time to do the sale, and there's a lot to know, and there's a huge learning curve. And by teaming up with some people who really knew the business on that side, uh, it it in, you know invited me into the that world with them. It's worked out really well. And your team has to be. We'll talk about team here. So in order to do share of sales, I think you have to have a good team. Now, if you're doing it on the scale that we do it, because we look at everything on that list. Uh, some folks will just look at certain areas. Mm-hmm. Like if there's 500 on the list, they're not going to look in every part of Allegheny County. They're going to focus on one neighborhood or one particular section of Allegheny County. Right. But you have to have a good team because there's a lot of research that needs done. 
there's a lot of bouncing back and forth feedback on what you feel a good deal is and what you feel a good deal isn't. What are the pros and cons of that specific deal? Because just as an example, we might look, we don't typically buy like warehouses or restaurants or stuff like that because they come up for sale. Okay. Just because that's not the business we're in, you know, I don't really, I'm not comfortable in buying a warehouse because I don't know values of a warehouse. Yeah, I don't know what kind of rents a warehouse can get. I don't know the, the, the demand on a warehouse space. So we typically, unless it's an, an amazing deal, we'll shy away from that. Mm-hmm. <coughs> now, there are people at the sale who are also bidding against you. So just don't think because you do all this work and all this research that you're going to get the property. You could put in hours, countless hours and days and weeks of research at, for the sale. And when you get there... The property could be one stay is what, or, or paid off. Okay. They call it stay or, or paid off, paid in full. Two, the property could be postponed. Maybe the owner's on some sort of payment plan. Uh, three, the owner could have filed bankruptcy. So now it gets postponed for six months or a year or whenever that bankruptcy is you know, ended. Uh, what else? Four could be... It could just be postponed for any reason. Okay? So you could do a lot of research and what happened. Or or five, somebody outbid you. So, again, you're not guaranteed to get anything after doing all this work. And I would imagine it would be ultra competitive, too, when it's a really good deal. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so they have different sales. They have... Not different sales, but they... they um, some of the properties are free and clear. Mm. So, okay, let me look on the list right here that we have. Let's see. So we've got we went our list down to right now we're at two hundred. Wow. And yeah, we'll whittle that down even further. Out of that list, there's probably fifty that are free and clear. Not even. Maybe twenty five that are free and clear. Those are the ones everybody's going to bid on. Because what that means is you're, they're free and clear of all encumbrances like taxes, mortgages, whatever. Whatever upset price, which is what's owed on the property for, to the court, like this is what you have to pay, this is the minimum. And then from there, you st- you know, you're in a bidding war with, with other investors. Okay. But the free and clear properties are the ones that are definitely going, most likely. And that's those are the ones you're going to have the most com- competition because it's the least amount of research that needs done okay okay so we were talking about are we we talking about the cons Uh, yeah absolutely okay so the pros are yeah you can make some good money doing this Mm -hmm. Uh, the cons are uh, you're really not supposed to go into any of these properties yeah this is a big one that I found interesting yeah because these are not owned by you they're owned by they're still owned by an individual Mm -hmm. so you're basically trespassing Mm -hmm. now we'll drive by the properties mm, Half the time they're occupied anyway, so you're not going to go into those. Uh, sometimes they're abandoned and no one's looking, so maybe you might just kind of work your way inside. Hypothetically. Sometimes. I think that may happen. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, because otherwise you're making an offer based on what you see from the outside. And we've gotten burned a few times. For instance, we bought a, a townhome recently in an area called uh, Whitehall. And... The town end was probably worth about one ten, all fixed up and, and done. We, we paid forty five based on what we saw from the outside. Couldn't get inside. Um, the outside was very clean. It was a town owned community. It was very clean. We got inside. It was d- destroyed. It was probably one of the worst ones. You know what property you're talking about? Was that on your last bus tour? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the one. <laughs> it smelled horrific. It looked horrific. And you saw it when it looked good. Yeah. Because it, all the stuff was removed. So anyway, we'll we'll probably just about break even on that one. Okay. And it just happens. Uh, there, there are ones, like recently we bought one for, I think it was $14,000. Okay. We didn't even drive by this one because we, we didn't get to it. The reason we bid on it because it was worth the gamble. So 14000 on Monday means that Monday at that sale, you have to come up with $1,400. Mm-hmm. It's 
I think it might have been eleven hundred. Might have been eleven thousand. So we had to come up with eleven hundred dollars. So we were willing to gamble eleven hundred dollars because then we had three or four days to go drive by and check it out. Because Friday you have to come up with the rest. So the way the Allegheny County sale works is Monday you have to come up gotcha. with ten percent. Okay. Friday by ten a.m. If you're there at ten o five, you could potentially forfeit that ten percent. Really? <laughs> okay, okay. So you got to get there anytime before Friday at ten a.m. with the other ninety percent. So what we did was, my partner went out and looked at the property. He realized that it was not a good investment, so we basically forfeited eleven hundred dollars. But we got four other properties at the sale, and we might have made fifty thousand. So right, right. It's just a, it's a give and take. Sometimes it's the, the dice roll is worth it. It was worth it. Even we wouldn't have done out. that if it was a hundred thousand dollar property without seeing it, because that's ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and that's a little different. Right. So that's uh, one of the cons is you can't get inside. You're not supposed to get inside. <laughs> okay. Uh, number two is there's typically no utilities on. There's typically um, no way to know if any of the utilities work. Mm-hmm. And, for example, in many cases, if the electric's off for a long time, you have to get it inspected and sometimes a new box and service just to get the electricity on. Okay. If the gas has been off for quite a while, you'll have to get, it depends on the gas company, sometimes you'll have to get a new gas line because what they do is they call it abandoning the gas line. The gotcha. gas company will abandon the line. It's so old and it's been off for three years. They'll make you put a new gas line in. Okay, We bought one in Scott Township we paid, I think, around sixty thousand dollars for this house, and we did a flip on it. We did a beautiful job. It turned out super nice. We sold it quick in one day, uh, almost full price. And at the end of the day, after all the repairs and stuff we put into it, and the kicker was, after the home inspection that the buyer did, they found that the sewer line was completely penetrated by roots. Uh, okay, okay, completely. And this sewer line was very deep, and it was hard to get to it. You needed special equipment. Um, it ended up costing us like twenty grand. So our profit went from about twenty grand to zero. I think we've talked about this before yeah. on there. Yeah. And this was, um, you know, this was a huge project. So, like for the average investor who doesn't do three or four projects a month. Like we're doing, you, if you put all your time, money, and effort into this one project, and you ended up making zero or maybe you lost money, it can be it be very disheartening and it can be financially yeah. painful too. Yeah. Wow. So that's another downside. Um, you can't do any inspections. You have to pay cash. So here's the problem with sheriff sales: is there aren't many lenders out there who are going to give you cash for these because you're not getting a good title. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of times there. There are things on title that need cleared up, and you can't find a lender that will lend you $100,000 to buy a house at share sale if they can't get an insurable title, meaning they we can't get title insurance on it so that their money is protected. So to do share sales, you have to have an ability to come up with this cash, and then when we started... You know, we wouldn't look at anything over X amount. Well, now we're to the point where we can, we can look at stuff up to, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars, depending on the month, how much money we have available. Right. Because we have some lenders that'll lend to us. We have our gotcha. own cash, so you have to have your cash In ready order. and ready yeah. to go to work for you. Uh, the other downside is your your real estate IQ has to be super high, meaning you really need to know the area. You need to know all the pros and cons of that specific property. Like worst case scenario, hey, I can't get inside it, so I got to figure worst case scenario, best case scenario. And in my my worst case scenario, if it happens, what's that going to be, and can I live with it? And that's how you have to look at every project that you do. And sometimes it's just a big question mark. Yeah. So when you're at the sale, you have to control your emotions and stop. Mm-hmm. At that price, you know, say, I'm not going over eighteen thousand dollars. That's it. And don't buy into the competitiveness of like, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. all right. Now, sometimes it, it, it's funny, but it'll depend on 
where we are in the sale. Let's say there's two parts of the sale. The first half is everything that's new, mm-hmm. and then they take a break, and then the second half is all the postponements. And on the postponed sale, typically...